Releasing in Australian cinemas this week is a new film called Christ Mess. And it's my great pleasure to be speaking to the writer-director of Christ Mess, Heath Davis. Heath, welcome to, again to Movie Metropolis. Hi, Peter. Thank you for having me. It's good to be back. Pleasure to always chat to you, mate. Yeah, no, it's good to talk to you too. And I think the last time we spoke was at BOFA, Tasmanian Film Festival, for Book it Week. Was. It was, <laughs> yes. Uh, it was a very memorable three days I had down there uh, with Sam Neill, actually. So that was a really good time. Great people down there. Um, we're actually bringing the film to Hobart, but they're working on getting it to Launceston. So hopefully we get back down there. Be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, a very interesting uh, event it was then at the time. All right, now let's talk about Christ Mess. And uh, um, it's it's a really interesting uh, sort of comedy drama. And uh, uh, tell me about the the background to it. What inspired you to write and direct it? Well, um, it came about for uh, another film falling over. So I was going to make another because I'd made the local movie that I got hired to do, which was a fairly decent budget. Um, we put together this other sort of crime comedy with a really big name British actor attached and then COVID happened. So our finance is sort of like everybody else's, the film fell apart. I was like, oh, what are we going to do now? And um, there's not much to do during COVID periods, but watch things. And so this was near the first kind of COVID where Christmas was happening and we, a lot of our family members and friends had COVID, so we were going to be on our own. I've got two little kids now. So I um, and my partner loved Christmas movies. And I've had people ask me and tell me in the past, you didn't really think about making a Christmas movie. Everybody sort of watches them and they're mostly not very good. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, and I'd seen a couple. And so I had time on my hands and I went, okay, I'm going to watch every Christmas movie that there is because the streamers all have them. The Hallmark ones, the big ones, you know, and 98% of them, there's a couple of cool little indie films, one specifically called Happy Christmas that Joe Swanberg made in the US, a little indie. Um, that re I, I really like that film. And so, but none of them, apart from that, really like, resonated at all. Like, oh, nothing like the Christmases that I've experienced in my family and my friends and Western Sydney and... You know, Christmas can be very tough. It can be very stressful. It can be very lonely. Um, you know, mental health sort of exacerbates and so does alcoholism. And so it can be a really chaotic time internally and externally. And I was like, well, I think I could, you know, put my own spin on this if I'm going to write one. And I was looking to do something small that we could pull off, like, in COVID sort of parameters. Um, so it was always going to be rooted in character. Um, and Steve Lamarck, when our lead character, who's been in all my films, his first job out of acting school at the end of the year, where he went with Joel Edgerton and Gavin Wenham and those guys, was at uh, the Penrith Plaza Mall. He was the shopping centre Santa, literally. Um, and he was doing, uh, you know, acid at the time and so it was just i always thought that was interesting and to see this actor that you know had these hopes and dreams and you know the reality of a of you know a working gigging actor in australia or you know indie films and stuff. so it's not all glossy or hollywood and and so i sort of had a thread and i was like well if i can actually have a story that deals um, that sort of subverts the christmas film but is emotionally real and sort of depicts this what it is to be you know for a real old christmas sort of experience where i grew up i, I thought you know i would spoken to a lot of people and i knew christmas could be hard for a lot of like friends of mine and i was like i think there's something here um and so when i found the character and the, the themes the threads i sort of gave myself that playing field of hey it's Christmas time most of the time. Everything's shut. We're in, we're in the house a lot at Christmas, as we do. Um, and you're forced to sort of be with people you often don't connect with or like, and they could be family members. So I thought there's drama there, and that was terrain that hadn't really been tackled. Um, and that's how it all sort of came about. Um, and, yeah, people are really connecting to sort of the message of the film and the heart to it. 
what an interesting backstory to hear all that. That is <laughs> that is so fascinating. And yeah, uh, it was like I always say, there's a three prong attack. It's like story, and then this and that, and but you know, there's no rhyme or reason now uh, how these ideas come to being for me and how I make them. And I've sort of learned sort of go uh, when they come to me, they really just almost like biblically shine on me like you gotta tell this story. And that was the that was one of them. And so writing it was really was really I knew who I was writing it for and I knew how I was gonna make it. Um and it was one of those ones that just came out. They don't all do it. Some can be very hard. I was like, I think I got something here. Um and you know, and we could actually pull it off with you know the limited resources we had at our disposal. Well, well done on that. It's uh, it, it works uh, it works really well, and it's interesting how Steve's character goes through an an interesting sort of arc, uh, as he did in Broke, uh, your uh, uh, previous yeah. film. Yeah, well, we had a bit of success with that. Yeah, and I was like, we had a, people really connected with that, and I was like, because it was the emotional truth again, and I sort of had this even with book pick. I've always had this trilogy of the fallen hero sort of thing in the back of my head and i was like you know what if we set that at christmas time and it's a tough it's a tough time for independent movies it's a tough time for australian movies and um, independent generally um and i was like i don't know if i want to make another little independent film that does some festival runs and gets a bit of a release and you know people see it and it'll be out there and maybe forgotten about i was like a christmas theme film always has a life they renew them every year you know um and i was like i think this could be because it's so different to everything else we sort of you know take some of the strengths that work broke emotionally into a film that's a bit more accessible because it's a christmasy thing um it might work um and so far so good Yes, yes, you're getting some really good responses, which is which is great to see. Uh, now, tell me about the rest of the cast because uh, I mean, Darren Gilsonen is so good always, and he's been in um, in previous films. But Nicole Pastor and Hannah Joy, tell me about uh, casting them, and they have such interesting characters. Yeah, well, uh, Darren Gilsonen came in at the eleventh hour. Um, I initially wrote it as two men um, with with Hannah's character in the room and then I changed it mostly because of the uh, diversity. We took it to the marketplace and people liked it, but they wanted to really sanitise it, make it more of a typical Christmas movie, which is not what I wanted. Nobody didn't like it, They all, but they wanted to make it more like everything else. And part of that was like, oh, you can't have a film now with two men as your protagonists. You've really got it. So we sort of had a female character for a while. And it, and in the end, for uh, logistical reasons, it didn't work out at the 11th hour. And I was like, I'm going to have Darren in a different role. I was like, Darren, I think I want to go back to my instincts and make it just how it's supposed to be. And he goes, I agree with you. So he came on and it was the best decision we be made. Um, and it just took the film and and Hannah, she just was what I really uh, to me when I watched all these Christmas movies and my own Christmas movie uh, music. Sorry, music is almost synonymous to the Christmas movie in many ways. So I was like interested in that component with the carols and you have all and the old music and and then. I was talking to a few of my friends because it was COVID and the musicians hadn't been able to tour or do anything. And a lot of my musician friends struggle with substance abuse and, and mental health issues. And that sort of had exacerbated in the period. And I was like, well, maybe we can make the other character in the halfway home a musician. Uh, and that's where it came about. And then I started thinking a lot about Hannah, who I didn't know. She'd never acted ever before. She's just a musician who'd been in the, like, the band's music videos. But the, the music, if you listen, and they write these sophisticated pop songs. So if you listen to middle kids' music, they don't have these rich melodies and harmonies, but if you listen, really listen to the lyrics, you, a lot of the songs are about Hannah's relationship with alcohol. Uh, she's open about that. So I was like, I think she might connect to this. So I reached out to her. Um, on the social media platform, Facebook, and said, hey, Anna, and she'd seen some of the other movies, and I was like, I've written you a role in my new film. And 
And she thought I was going crazy. She's like, what do you mean? And I'm not like, I said I love, but I have. You could read it. And would you entertain maybe being in it? And she was like, well, yeah. I mean, send it to me. So she read it. She really connected to it. And she connected to it um, in all the right ways. She got picked up on the subtext and the nuance and all of those things related to character. And like, I think, oh, I think I wanted this. And I'm like, well, let's meet. we met like, you know, in a park and we, we had our masks on. It was so COVID. And I was like, when well, you want to do this, it's going to take a lot of work. Um, and she was like, I'm down. The band couldn't tour, um, but she was really into it, really into it. Um, and we just had a lot of conversations and we, a lot, a lot of, not, wasn't really rehearsals. It was all about character, subject, theme, intonation. And then when COVID I sort of opened up, she on her own bat went and actually enrolled in this short biter acting with the camera cord. So she turned up tonight on this Monday night course and all the other students were like middle kids fans and she was there. So, but that was the kind of, that's the kind of person she is. That's how into it she was. Um, and then, you know, we just, we turned the camera over and we did some strip reads and it was the biggest risk I've ever taken. And I was like, well, I don't know what we're going to get, but I'm confident. Um, and she just owned it. She looked great on camera. But she's just a, she's a smart and a performer and just really, you know, as a musician, obviously, and she brought a lot of her own life into it and and she just got better each day. And it's just one of, the, one of the best things I've actually done um, in terms of casting. It's given the film up some reach because they'd be following Yes, well, well done on that. And uh, talk about Nicole, who plays uh, the daughter, of uh, interesting characterisation well, there. Yeah, so Nicole, um, I've known Nicole for some time. Um, she's part of one of the indie kids, but middle kids, she's the indie kids. So. But we always, the day players, like when we go into a town to make a movie, um, and they're always in some regional town or suburban town because you get a lot of love in those areas. Uh, so we shot this movie in Campbelltown in the southwest of Sydney. And so Nicole was a local. She lives out in uh, Ingleburn, which is not far from actually where we're filming. So it's always all the local, like the extras are all locals, um, but the day players and supports, always locals. So it's always good to give, give back, back to the area that's giving you so much. Um, so, yeah, and she and Steve were friendly. So I was like, oh, we've already sort of already had this sort of, sort of chemistry and we're comfortable around each other. And so she did a read for me and I was like, yeah, you know, you can do this. Okay. Uh, again, well done on all that because it all uh, fits together so so nicely. It does, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And and as you've already said, it's not the usual Christmas sort of film, and and, and I think that's what oh. sets it apart and and makes it so enjoyable because it is a genuinely human sort of story. Um, yeah. Well, I just call it a it's a film, you know, it's just, it's a film set at Christmas time. So you know, but we we do play into the tropes a little bit but it's not this hey it's an unbelievable christmas mm. blah 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 it's just about people in a period of time that can be very trying uh for a lot of people that's the reality of christmas um mm. you know and it's just a it's a really chaotic time uh, uh but you know and, we, and what was great we could actually you know pay homage to those classic movies like it's a wonderful life and all those Christmas songs are all free in the public domain too. So that was what was great about it. So it brings that production values. You could really make it a Christmas film, you know, musically. So. Okay. And how did you find the house that uh, the film is largely shot in? It's, isn't it good? Isn't it great? Like, yeah. The thing is a big character. It's a huge character in this movie. It really is. And so our, our partner's in Campbelltown, so... The Campbelltown Catholic Club, which is in, like, they work in conjunction with the, the council. Um, they really, we told them what we're doing and they were all so excited about it. They had this abandoned old house that lives, it's like, you wouldn't realise it, but it's just this house that sits in between the car park of the Catholic Club 
across the road from the camp, the art center. And it's just this house. And like, we've had this house that we actually did use once upon a time as a halfway house of the people that fell on hard times. They used it as this residence, but it had been sort of derelict for the last three or four years. It was just sitting there dormant. And they, and they were like, one of the guys, you should take a look at it. And I'm like, yeah, great. We went in there and it was perfect. Like the drapes, the curtains, the textures on the, well, in the kitchen and the colour pattern, everything was actually there. So we, all we had to do was sort of go to the local Lifeline and Minis and dress around. And as soon as I walked into the place, I was like, there's an energy here. This feels like where the characters would live. And because it's had so many, it's been transient, so it's had so many people come and go, and, I, and the camera picked up on that energy. And so when every crew member would come, like when our production designer, our art directors turned up, they're like, oh, my God, it feels like the script. And then when the actors turned up, we did our first real read in the kitchen there. They were like, oh, my God, this feels exactly like. And again, um, aesthetically it worked, but it looked great and it actually was just one of those happy accidents. And we had a lot of those. I mean, it was hard. We had floods too. So we shot the movie in winter and the whole house, the front yard, backyard was flooded. Yeah, all of Campbelltown and Camden had really bad floods. So we had all of those problems against us, but inside we were getting great stuff. How incredible that uh, you, yeah. uh, whenever you make a film, that you catering, never know. Right? Lot, yeah, we lost all our catering at the last minute because their big kitchens all flooded and then uh, their produce, the local produce was all destroyed. Yeah, so uh, that was one of many hurdles. It wasn't just COVID, it was conditions as well oh my goodness i can just see the dvd release which has all of that behind the scenes making of yeah. well, stuff. i was like oh my god and i'm like guys this is we had to change the schedule around i said this is summer it's supposed to be christmas so we got some sunny days but at the end of each day when the rain stopped we had to get the hose on the lawn to hose the mud off the lawn like because <laughs> it was like no one's gonna buy this as christmas Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. All right. Now, <laughs> uh, incredible. The glamour of filmmaking. I, I love it. It's, yeah, uh, it's... <laughs> Okay. Now, Heath, tell me about getting the film out there because it's it's great. You've got a distributor. You've got uh, screenings coming yeah. up well, in cinemas. It's, a, it's yep. a national release in a period of time. Like movies, when I first made Broke in like 2018 or 16 or whatever it was now, now, yeah, it was hard then. Oh, my God, the landscape of movies has just changed massively every time I release a film. So to actually have cinemas put on an indie movie, an Australian indie film, nationally is a really big deal. I mean, they don't do that a lot um, for many reasons. So we are coming to every major city at each day because there's some good word of mouth around this movie. It's getting picked up by another cinema. Um, so we uh, open on most cities on the 30th, which is this Thursday, and we've been doing these Q&A events, sort of preview mini premieres in advance just to sort of go to the town, build the awareness, and people like to come out to those and, you know, you work with the cinema because the cinemas are struggling. They're like almost 40% down. So, mm. you know, people aren't even going to lean out in Capra and movies. So, it's a really tough time. Um, it all needs a reboot. The, it's, it's a broken system, but we're, you know, we're out there relying on, you know, good word of mouth and these Q&As and people tell their friends to come. And, um, and it plays so well in a forum of people. There's such heart and it's a community and they're watching this film about human beings connecting and it's funny and, you know, it's sad. And so I really encourage everybody to sort of get to the cinema and watch it if they can. Um, and then it's fast track to a streamer, um, which is great because, you know, it's I'm still a cinema purist, but the reality is, you know, most people will watch this movie when it comes to one of the streaming platforms. Um, yeah. And that gives the film eyeballs and it's Christmassy. So I'm just hoping when it hits the streamer, when it hits binge in December, um, which I, we're trying to get people to the cinema, so I won't say that. Um, we, it will give 
you know, people who don't normally seek out these type of movies, they might seek it out because it's, it's crazy and enjoy it. So that's my hope. So Because the whole ecosystem of indie film and Australian film, it's really on its knees and it really needs, everybody needs to unite and come together more. It's, um, it's, a, real, it's a real problem. Yes, absolutely. No, on my shows, I've been encouraging people to go to the cinema, see these films on the big oh, screen absolutely. with an audience. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, eventually, that if you know they'll go, they took the video store from us, they took the DVD stores, and, you know, the record stores and cinemas. They're big buildings, and you know they love to put apartments and duplexes up wherever they can. Yeah. Um, and you know those independent cinemas are really they're, they're doing it tough, and but even the mainstreams because the level of quality of movies just aren't that great anymore, and people have just got into this habit of I'll oh, just watch it on TV, and you know, and, and most of the time that's why all these Christmas movies I think do so well. It's it's so terrible, but people are like cracking presents or on their phone or having a conversation while it's playing in the background. You know, it's uh, yeah, yeah, uh, but, but it. I've seen it with enough people internationally and in Australia that I know if people go to the cinema and watch it with their friends, they're going to really enjoy the experience. Uh, absolutely right. And 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 tell me about the Q&As you've had so far. What sort of responses and questions have you had well, from amazing. audiences? Um, just really people, just regular Joes, just, they're just disarmed by it's the emotional resonance. And it's even people that you wouldn't normally expect and you get people seeing a film that they probably wouldn't normally see. And mm. as you said, it's, it's not what they were expecting. And they're just like, wow, this is like a real movie. There's real emotion. There's real heart here. That's the characters that sort of, you know, that are embracing them. And they they kind of miss that experience because they don't get these type of movies anymore. And everyone still loves the Shawshank Redemption. Not that I'm comparing my film to the Shawshank Redemption, but it's got those themes of connection and triumph over a hardship but all those things that once upon a time we all went to the movies to see but along the lines you know we've sort of deviated away from that and I think they just can identify to what's happening on the screen and so I'm getting people sharing their own stories with their own families and their own friends and um and it's connecting with them we've partnered up with uh, uh, Smart Recovery Australia, who watched the movie and they saw just it as a great sort of tool to sort of bring some hope and um, to addicts and their families over Christmas. So that's been really amazing just to sort of not only be, you know, an entertaining movie, but also have a message and, you know, hopefully help people or maybe educate them. Uh, but, you know, the Dendy... Newtown Thursday night, we sold three sessions out of opening night, which is pretty amazing. And we've done that before tonight. The Blue Mountains are sold out. I'm heading out there soon. So, um, you know, we come to, we're doing these across the country and then it'll have its run. So, I hope, you know, if an indie film plays for a few weeks at the cinemas, it's, it's done well. Oh, look, hopefully it will do well and, and uh, it deserves to. So, look, congratulations on that, uh, uh, Thank you Heath. So much. Yeah, and I must ask you, are you working on another film at the moment? Yeah, there's a few, well, you know what? I went into this movie thinking, you know what, if I never make another movie, that's okay because I wanted to sort of make something that will sort of get seen every Christmas and just be really, you know, emotionally just honest and those films are really hard to make. Um, there's a couple I've written, uh, it always happens, when I'm making a film, like physically filming, and I, this, the next idea comes. And I always had a music film in my mind. I just didn't know my hook, my angle for it. Um, but spending time with Hannah, it sort of came to me mid-shoot and I figured out the story. Um, so, yeah, we've been developing that with Screen New South Wales. It's a, it's a, it's a musical set on the Gold Coast called The Happy Hour. Um, it's very much a, re a real version of, say, A Star is Born meets The Fabulous Baker Boy. So it yeah. deals with that culture of the lounge lizard musician who plays the hotel bars that, you know, nobody really cares, but they're amazing musicians. So I've, like, written real musicians and, you know, around actors and so it's very music-centric. 
um, are really, yeah, really passionate about it. And there's a couple of documentaries and we started filming a documentary um, on a chap named Jack Carlson. I don't know if you're familiar with the meme and the, it went very viral. He's a, he's a, an infamous Australian criminal who was uh, was famous for being known as the succulent Chinese meal guy. I don't know if you've ever seen that video, but um, he was arrested once for eating uh, a meal in a restaurant in Brisbane, a Chinese meal, and he put on a performance for the press and the police because he was uh, wrongfully arrested. And because he's a con man, he has all these aliases. And he put on this performance, which is actually in 2013 went viral like a lot he's got this huge cult following he's known as democracy manifest succulent chinese meal man but he just happens to be a a, a huge australian criminal a former actor a jack of all trades still alive he's in his 80s and um we've been following documenting his story and jack um is one of the most interesting cats that i've ever met he's uh as charismatic as Chopper Reed, and he's escaped every Australian prison. The only inmates to ever do that. So, but he's very charismatic. Um, so we've been spending a bit of time with him, and I've been developing his story, uh, another documentary based on the life of Ian Roberts, a rugby league player who's the only openly gay athlete, well, gay rugby guy in Australia for a very, very long time. Um, and nobody knows his story, and his story is quite remarkable so um yeah so i think a documentary is going to come next um and mostly because uh just the stories and the characters sort of connected to me um and they're smaller they're a little bit more you know smaller crews you can take a bit more time with them so yeah but um yeah i think uh yeah i think people are going to really like it the, um, i'm enjoying the process of it um, and again they're the really human connection stories when you find a really fascinating like person a document they kind of write themselves a little bit so uh so that so jack carlson was a very fascinating very fascinating man sounds like it's three very interesting projects indeed heath look yeah, uh look forward yeah. to seeing hopefully, them all <laughs> hopefully hopefully we get to them sooner rather than later touch me Touch wood. Okay, I like it. And in the meantime, people should get to the cinema and see from November 30th, Christ yes. Mess, written and directed by Heath Davis. And it's been my great pleasure talking to you, Heath, again. All the best. Always a pleasure. Good to see you. And keep watching movies and keep listening to Peter. Thank you, friends. <laughs> Thank you, Thanks, Heath. All the best. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.